In 1993, more than a decade ago now, Microsoft released the first version of Windows NT, and that was version 3.1. When they released that operating system, they had determined to develop a brand new file system from the ground up just for this new operating system. And that file system became known as NTFS. While NTFS has evolved throughout the years with the newer versions of NT, going from 3.1 to 3.5, eventually from 3.5.1 to 4, and then to Windows 2000, and finally now XP, it has changed a lot. But it's still primarily the same basic file system with a lot of extra features than it had in the beginning. One of the first features we'll want to look at has been here since the very beginning of using NTFS. And it's also one of the most important features that the file system has. And that's something called permissions. Permissions allow us to determine which users can access the various resources on our hard drive. For example, I can say that user Tom can access 13 out of 15 files in a particular folder. But user Mary can access all 15 of those files. But I can go even further than that. I can say that Tom has read-only access, and Mary can both read and write to the files. So there's a lot of power with permissions, and that's something we'll need to understand in great detail by itself. We also have a feature called compression. Compression allows us to take a data file and cause it to take up less space on the hard drive using techniques that store the data in a smaller footprint in the drive space. We can also use encryption. Encryption allows us to take data in a readable format and convert it to a non-readable format in such a way that we can convert it back to the readable format later on. We also have recoverability features built into NTFS. One of the key recoverability features is this. The NTFS file system uses something called a master file table, or MFT. The MFT is stored at the beginning of the hard drive, and then it is also stored again at approximately the middle of the hard drive. So there are two copies of the master file table at all time. If one copy of the master file table becomes corrupted, then the other copy can be used to restore the corrupted copy. All of that happens automatically. Why is this so important? Because the master file table is the database that says where everything is on your hard drive. You may put a file on your hard drive in a certain folder or directory, but it's actually the master file table that tells the operating system, hey, this file is over here in this directory. So if we lose that, then we lose all of our structure. The master file table then is very important. And this is one of the recoverability features of the NTFS file system. Another interesting feature under the hood of NTFS that you do not hear a lot about is something called cluster remapping. It actually has the ability to detect a bad cluster on the fly and automatically mark the cluster as bad and move the data to another cluster on the hard drive. Now, you don't have to understand what a cluster is to know that when something's bad, you don't want to use it, and you want to find something that's good to use instead. Well, that's what NTFS actually does for us. The very design of the NTFS file system actually lowers fragmentation levels because it does something called padding for every file it puts on the drive. In other words, it reserves a little bit of extra space on the drive in case it's needed by that file to grow later on. However, you should not take this to mean that fragmentation is no longer an issue. There's an entire corporation out there that makes the vast majority of its income simply by selling defragmentation software to run on your Windows XP, Windows 2000, and so forth operating systems. So fragmentation is still a problem. It's just not as big of a problem as it is with FAT or FAT32 file systems. Another really important concept of NTFS to understand is the concept of ownership. When we talk about ownership, we're talking about the fact that somebody owns the data. Now, in an NTFS environment, the user account that creates a file or folder is the owner by default. 
So if I, as a user, go into a directory and create a new file, not modify a file that already existed, but I create a new file, then what I am doing is actually not only creating a file, but also specifying myself as the owner of that file. So what's so unique about ownership? Well, by default, this account has full control of the resource. But even if full control is lost, here's an interesting thing. Administrators can take ownership and then change permissions on the resource. Let me give you a scenario. Let's say a user has a directory where they're storing their own data. They've decided to create a new folder in that directory and set the permissions so that administrators do not have any access and only they have access to that data. That employee leaves the company. Now I have been asked to go and recover that data. Now wait a minute. That employee explicitly said I couldn't have access. And that's where the power of ownership comes into play. Anyone who is a domain administrator will have the ability to go and take ownership of those files. Now that I have ownership, here's the interesting part. I still don't have access. If I double click on the file or folder, I'll still get an access denied. But what I can do is right click on the file or folder select properties, go to the security tab, and actually manage permissions. Ah, there we've learned the important thing about ownership. If you are the owner of a file or folder, regardless of what the permissions say, you will be able to change permissions. So if you're the owner, it means that even if you're denied access to something, you can go in and actually give yourself access to that thing. So ownership is a very important concept. Something that is new to Windows XP and has actually been confusing an awful lot of support professionals is this concept of simple file sharing. Windows XP defaults to using simple file sharing right out of the box after the install. Here's the reason this is so confusing. When simple file sharing is enabled, it does not allow for standard or normal permission management. So it's important that we understand that the default is your standard security dialog boxes are gone. So if you're used to using those in NT and in Windows 2000, you'll have to first of all disable simple file sharing so you can use, I guess we can call it complex file sharing, even though Microsoft doesn't really call it that. So we'll have to turn this feature off in that case. And that's going to give us the ability to effectively manage our permissions. Otherwise, we're just going to get what XP thinks is best for us. The concept is to simplify it and make it easier for non-technical people to be able to share information. We, of course, as desktop support technicians, need to get into that more technical information.